Imagine standing in the dense forests and open savannas of prehistoric Africa, a world teeming with megafauna, giant elephants, saber-toothed cats, and towering giraffes. It was here, over 300,000 years ago, that a mysterious human ancestor walked the Earth. A species that might be one of the key links between archaic humans and us. Homo rhodesiensis is a puzzle that has baffled scientists for decades. Who were they? How did they live? And could they be the long-lost ancestors of both modern humans and Neanderthals? Let's unravel the mystery of Homo rhodesiensis and explore how they might have shaped the course of human history. In 1921, a miner working in a cave in what is now Zambia stumbled upon something extraordinary, an ancient skull with a peculiar combination of features. This skull, later named the Kabwe One or Broken Hill Skull, was one of the best preserved hominin fossils ever found. It was not just any fossil, it was a window into a world long lost, where early human relatives roamed the African plains, hunting, foraging, and adapting to an ever-changing environment. But what made it so unusual? Unlike earlier human ancestors, Kabwe One had a massive, thick-boned skull, a prominent brow ridge, and a brain capacity nearly as large as that of modern humans, around 1,280 cubic centimeters. However, its face was more primitive, with a wide nose and large teeth, traits seen in much older human relatives. This mix of advanced and archaic traits placed Homo rhodesiensis at a unique crossroads in human evolution, making it difficult to categorize definitively. For years, scientists debated where this fossil fit into our evolutionary tree. Some argued it belonged to Homo heidelbergensis, a species thought to be a common ancestor of both Neanderthals and modern humans. Others insisted it was distinct enough to deserve its own classification. Thus, Homo rhodesiensis was born. But was it truly a separate species or just a variation of another hominin? And if it was indeed a distinct species, what does that mean for our understanding of human ancestry? And here's where things get even more intriguing. Some researchers believe Homo rhodesiensis may have been the immediate predecessor of Homo sapiens, making it a direct ancestor of us. If true, this could rewrite the story of human origins as we know it. Could we be carrying traces of their DNA within us? Could our behaviors, intelligence, and survival instincts be linked to this enigmatic species? The discovery of Kabwe One was just the beginning of a long-standing debate that still rages in scientific circles today. Unlike earlier hominins, Homo rhodesiensis had a unique combination of primitive and advanced traits. Their robust skeletons suggest they were powerful hunters, capable of taking down large prey with handmade wooden spears and stone tools. These tools, while not as advanced as those used by later humans, were effective enough to allow them to hunt a wide variety of animals. But how intelligent were they? Could they plan hunting strategies? Did they communicate in ways more complex than simple grunts and gestures? Evidence suggests that they were far more advanced than their predecessors. Their brain size was within the range of modern humans, implying complex thought, problem solving, and possibly even rudimentary language. Fossil evidence also shows signs of injuries that healed over time, hinting at social structures where individuals cared for the wounded, something we associate with later humans. This suggests a level of cooperation and empathy that sets them apart from many other species of their time. Their environment was harsh. They lived in a world dominated by sudden climate shifts, from humid forests to arid plains. Yet, Homo rhodesiensis thrived, showing an adaptability that may have given rise to later hominin species. Did they migrate? Did they encounter and interbreed with other human relatives, such as Neanderthals or Denisovans? The truth remains hidden in the sands of time. Interestingly, 
Some fossil remains show signs of infections and bone fractures, yet these individuals survived for extended periods, meaning they must have received care from their peers. This hints at an early form of social bonds and possibly even early forms of compassion, an essential step in the development of complex societies. If Homo rhodesiensis cared for their sick and injured, does that mean they also had emotional connections, family structures, and even the beginnings of cultural traditions? Perhaps one of the biggest questions surrounding Homo rhodesiensis is whether they were simply an African variant of Homo heidelbergensis or something more. If they were indeed a separate species, did they contribute to the genetic makeup of modern humans? Or were they an evolutionary offshoot that eventually faded into extinction without passing on their genes? Some genetic studies suggest that early human populations in Africa, around 300,000 years ago, were highly diverse, with multiple groups of hominins coexisting. Could Homo rhodesiensis have been part of this mosaic, eventually merging with other populations to give rise to Homo sapiens? If so, then we are not just their descendants. We are their legacy, carrying fragments of their existence within our very DNA. One theory proposes that Homo rhodesiensis was an ancestor to early humans in Africa, while Homo heidelbergensis in Europe evolved into the Neanderthals. If true, this would mean that Homo rhodesiensis played a crucial role in shaping modern human evolution, yet their name remains largely unknown to the public. Why? Could it be that our understanding of human evolution has been overly Eurocentric, focusing too much on Neanderthals and ignoring the rich and complex history of early humans in Africa? Unlike Neanderthals and Denisovans, we have yet to extract DNA from Homo rhodesiensis fossils, meaning we still don't know whether they left a genetic imprint on today's human populations. Did they disappear due to climate changes, competition, or did they merge with other human species, leaving traces of their legacy in our DNA? Recent fossil discoveries across Africa suggest that human evolution was not a linear progression, but rather a tangled web of interbreeding and adaptation. If we could one day recover ancient DNA from Homo rhodesiensis, it might provide a long-awaited answer to one of anthropology's greatest mysteries. The existence of Homo rhodesiensis challenges the traditional story of human origins. Instead of a simple out-of-Africa model, where modern humans evolved from a single population, the evidence suggests a much more complex past, where multiple human species coexisted, interbred, and evolved together. This paints a picture of early human history not as a straight path, but as a vast, interconnected web of species each influencing the other in profound ways. So, were they our ancestors, or were they a side branch of evolution that vanished? The truth is still out there, waiting to be uncovered. If you've made it this far, you're among the few who truly explore the depths of our ancient past. But did you know that 99% of our viewers aren't subscribed? If you love unraveling the mysteries of human history, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Together, let's continue our journey into the past.